everyone, my name is Katie and I'm a teacher here at the Wenatchee River Institute. Some of you may recognize me or other people in this video from a field trip to our campus here in Leavenworth or maybe from a visit to your school. Here at the Wenatchee River Institute, we love learning about science. This includes animals, plants, and the habitats that they live in, uh, and other interesting things that happen outside. Today we're going to be talking about ecosystems, but what is an ecosystem? An ecosystem is made up of all the living and non-living things in an area. Let's take a look around and see if we can identify some of these living and non-living things. The ecosystem of this place includes the river, birds, soil, and plants. And I just see a ton of plants around here. Let's take a closer look. And would you look at this magnificent plant? This flower is called grape hyacinth, and you can see why it almost looks like a little bunch of grapes. Now, I wonder, does this plant have everything it needs to be happy? Well, there's actually an acronym that we can use. An acronym is a set of letters that represents a word, and the one we're going to use is lawns. So, we can think about does this plant have enough light? Just like we need to stay warm, plants need a warm temperature as well. Light keeps plants warm and helps make food for the plants. The next word is air. Just like we need to breathe, plants need air as well. Air is used to make food for the plant. Water. Now, I don't see any water around here, but if we look by the base of the plant at the soil, we can see that there's a lot of moisture in there that the plants are sucking up through their roots. So we know that this plant has enough water. Nutrients. Just like those roots are grabbing water for the plant, it is also grabbing nutrients, just like the food that we need to eat. Plants need nutrients as well. And finally, space. Does this plant have enough room to grow? Well, I see that it, even though it does have a few friends, it has plenty of room to spread out and grow big and strong. Speaking of spaces, each space is unique. Each space is a different ecosystem and habitat, and where we live, there are a bunch of unique spaces as well. The ecosystem here in Leavenworth is called a temperate forest. Temperate means not too hot, not too cold. So a temperate forest ecosystem is able to support a lot of different kinds of organisms. If you look around on the sunshiny slopes, you're likely to find tall ponderosa pines and these yellow balsam root flowers. They like to live where it's dry and sunny. And if you look around in the shady spots or by the water, you'll find plants like western red cedars and ferns and mosses and plants that like to live in the shady, more wet areas. Hey, it's Naomi from the Wenatchee River Institute. And today you can find me in a riparian ecosystem. A riparian ecosystem is an area where land meets a river, a stream, or a lake. You can find riparian ecosystems in both Leavenworth and in Wenatchee. Because there's water nearby, there is a diverse amount of plant life in a riparian ecosystem. Some common plants that you will likely find in a riparian ecosystem are willows, which you can see here, and cottonwood trees, which you can see here. Cottonwoods are a drought intolerant plant, meaning that they cannot survive in dry conditions. So if you see a cottonwood tree, that is a sure sign that there is an abundance of water nearby. Are plants in a riparian ecosystem getting everything they need to survive? Think back to the acronym LAWNS. 
Write down or draw how you think plants in a riparian ecosystem are getting light, air, water, nutrients, and space. Hi, it's Elisa from Wenatchee River Institute, and I'm in Wenatchee. As you take a look around Wenatchee, you'll notice a river, some shrubs, and a little bit of brown and green on our hills. Wenatchee, like Leavenworth, has habitat where the land and the water meet. Animals and plants thrive in this area. This tree can dig its roots into the soil where it can access all of this water and grow. The majority of Wenatchee's ecosystem is called shrub step. In the shrub step, one of the most common plants is the sagebrush. Our area does not get a lot of water and it has dry summers and dry winters. So the plants living in this area have adapted and they can store their water. My favorite part about the shrub step is that even though they're called shrubs, they can get really, really tall. Wenatchee's ecosystem includes the Columbia River. The Columbia River is a source of water for many plants and animals. Because this river is so important to us, draw what you think this ecosystem would look like without a river. Now it's your turn to get outside and explore the ecosystems around you.